I am Jung Lok. Thank you for coming to the monthly Zoom chat. And um, as in every other month, I uh, collected some of the questions from you and then I'll try to answer it. And um, today I got a question from Terry C. I mean, actually from Teresa. And um, Teresa has a um, request to ask me to talk a little bit about mounting. And um, let me see, I don't think Teresa has uh, entered the chat room yet. So um, I will wait a little bit for her. No, I'm because here, I want I'm to... here. Oh, okay, you're here, okay, hi. Um, so um, do you want me to talk about the material or the kind of crew or the entire process? What do you want me to talk about? I was just wondering how the entire process went, you know, after we finish a painting to get it re ready for framing. Um, I've done the wet mounting uh, method, but you said you had a, a different type of a method. Oh, okay. Um, so you are familiar with the wet mounting? Yeah, and it's uh, quite complicated. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Well, um, actually, because, you know, when I get the questions, I'm not 100% sure exactly what you're asking for. So I have a bit of everything here. Um, there are multiple material that you use for the wet mounting. And uh, the, the paper is so thin. Um, with you used to wet mount, you have a glue. And then there are all these different theory. I believe that, you know, like a majority of the people in this um, Zoom um, are members of the Sumi Society of America. And then if you are a member, you would have their quarterly magazine. Okay, this is the latest one that they have uh, published. And inside it, there's actually an article on um, preparing the uh, wheat flour, right? So this is one of the way to, I mean, cover one of the material that we use. And in this particular one, um, the author is asking you to use just pure wheat flour, which is fine because um, this is also uh, kind of like the most traditional way of mounting, meaning that you don't need to go to the store to buy anything. You can go to the kitchen and can and do that. And um, one time I was, remember, remember last time we were um, uh, a few months ago talking about the Chakishi board and I was emailing various um, our suppliers on Chakishi board. And then while I was at it, uh, because I was also preparing my um, paper crinkling class, I was asking them um, for the availability of master paper, um, different kind of paper suitable for crinkling and also for mounting. So uh, some of them are, you know, are, are responsive, you know, of course to a different level, but then some of them would actually send me the link to where, where they sell the stuff in their website. And some of them, um, uh, and, and one really nice gentleman actually sent me a um, Ziploc bag of wheat flour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, but then basically, I mean, like, uh, you can go to the store and buy wheat, pure wheat flour, especially if you're close to a um, Chinese grocery store. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, like, you can just buy the pure wheat flour. It's usually around $1.19. It used to be $0.99, cent, but then with inflation, it's around $1.19. And, you know, depending on location, if you're not uh, in a place where... Uh, there's a lot of Asian populations, so Asian produce will be more expensive. It will be a dollar fifty nine, or maybe a dollar ninety nine, but it's around one fifty dollars. And and basically, you just dilute it, just like when you are cooking and mixing a cornstarch uh, uh, to make your gravy, you know. And then after that, you cook them in warm water into a very thin glue, and that would be the uh, material. But I have to say that I'm a very lazy person. Um, even cooking to that level, I'm so lazy. So what I have been doing with you have um, um, got my uh, paper crinkling class because when it comes to rice paper crinkling, after you crinkle the paper and paint on it, um, you cannot really present it because it's all crinkled. So within the class, I also show you how to mount it. And then, you know, like with you have the class, you will see that what I use is actually um, something that I bought from the um, a supply store. This is a pH balance from Linco. And then um, um, I had this jar for a very long time. And then recently, I think they changed the packaging. I think it looks like this now. So if you are just looking at the look, you may not find it, it looks like this now. But then um, it's a pH balance and it's museum gray. Um, what it really good is, is completely reversible with water. 
you don't have to buy kind of like another material to, to reverse it. And what I do is um, it has the consistency of almond glue. And I just, I just use one part of this and one part of regular water, stir it, and then I'll use it to wet mount. And the wet mount, since you know, Terry already know how, and I think uh, unless I, someone in the Zoom chat would like me to explain it, but basically, you know, you, you get your brushes and then um, you'll probably see that, I mean, these are actually old brushes. I have used them multiple times, but only for mounting. So even I use this multiple times, is has no color in it because what you want is you do not want a brush that you have painted on and use it for mounting because you you thought you clean it really well it may still have one dot of ink or color in it so so this brush i have used multiple times but then it is um actually a um a brush that only touched water and this is the brush that touched water and glue so this is the one that i i used to apply the glue and after I put it onto another piece of paper, I take this out and I use this one, which is only touching water, water, and water. Um, and then um, with you are uh, into the Chinese way of mounting, um, you may even have this, which is a very stiff brush for mounting. And this is not for painting, this, this is really stiff. Um, I, I have this, I bought this. I have used it once or twice. I find it a little bit rough, uh, meaning that you know, if I'm, if I'm yeah, really trying yeah. to push, I may be a little bit too hard and then make my own painting. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I have bought this, but I have not really been using it that much. Um, I have been using the soft brush, even if I'm trying to push. And then, you know, as I say, if you have seen the demo that I have in the uh, crinkling class, um, I will show you that, you know, like after I paste the two, um, the artwork and also the backing paper together, uh, which is like right side down, um, instead of, you know, instead of doing this and trying to grease the water out, what I would do is I would use this brush and when it's wet with water, it's, it, it's pretty gentle, you know, even if you want to apply pressure, it's pretty gentle. And after that, what I do is, I learned it from Zhang Dichi, I get a roll of um, paper towel. Hmm. And um, instead of laying paper and then padding on it, what I do is I actually roll over <laughs> and, and then, um, you know, like to absorb all the moisture. And of course, the whole, the whole roll will, you know, will be soaked. But then, you know, I, I, I don't want to waste space. So after I finish um, uh, using, I mean, like mounting a few pieces, I actually open it up a little bit and then uh, I, I try to air dry it and then I can use it again. I mean, I'm, <laughs> no, it, it's, it's just water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just water, right? And besides, yeah, right. you know, of course, you know, like when I say use it again, you are not going to use it for something other than art, right? So this is my, right. my role for art. And when I say use it again, basically I'll use it for wiping, um, cleaning my dishes. Um, say for example, I have a dirty dish, then, then you know, this has been used, I'll just use it to clean or something mm -hmm. like this in, before I throw it away. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's what it is, okay? And besides, you know, sometimes when you, when you mount, you know, four or five pieces of artwork, um, and you, you use it to roll and absorb the moisture, um, multiple pieces would be moistened. So you don't really want to throw away, you know, like 10, 15 pieces of this. So mm -hmm. um, you, you kind of let it dry out a little bit and you can reuse it to, mm -hmm. to be absorbing things again. So good, uh, good um, idea. And, and then another thing is, um, uh, if you have not, you know, see how I mount, uh, most people, when they mount, they will mount on an other piece of rice paper, which is the traditional way of doing it. As a matter of fact, when I started mounting my um, painting, I also have my artwork and then another piece of rice paper and mount it on top. And, um, and what, what um, uh, I have been doing is, um, um, you know, some of the stores 
sell mounting paper, which is basically a thicker piece of rice paper, machine made, um, and um, it's, it's mm. thicker, it's more sturdy. So it's, some of them are even called mounting paper. So, mm. so it's a thicker piece of rice paper, or you can just use regular piece of rice paper. But you know what? Um, as I say, you know, like this is too tough on me. Um, sometimes even with the most care, you might have a tendency to tear it, right? And then, you know, with this is a painting that you think is good enough to be mounted and you accidentally tear it, you really don't want that to happen. So yeah. after a lot of trial and error, what I find out is that um, I actually now use watercolor paper as my backing paper because it doesn't tear. All right. I, I have tried using different kinds of paper and then um, some artists use 90 pound. I have tried, but 90 pound, when you um, when it's string, it might string a little bit too much and might tear on the edges. So I've been using 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. Okay, and and because 140 pound, it doesn't really tear. So I don't have any kind of like bad accident anymore. Um, one thing, oh yeah, uh, uh, Noreen said masa. Masa is good too because masa is a relatively thick rice paper. So masa is good for mounting as well. Um, uh, and you know, the, the rice paper that was sold for mounting would be good for mounting. Masa paper would be good for mounting. Um, 90 pound watercolor paper, 140 pound. I use 140 pound because after I did that, it is so sturdy, I would just frame it as a 140 pound watercolor paper. I have absolutely no problem with any of those. And of course, 140 pound paper would be used archers or, you know, like um, the, the expensive brand. Um, it, it, it would be costly because it's three to $5 a piece. So what I do is I actually buy the book of, um, um, you know, 24 by 18 inches or 18 by, I mean, 1822, you know, like sometimes they come in a block. Sometimes they come in, you know, like uh, 24 pieces, um, 18 pieces and mm -hmm. and it's like a little book and 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 relatively uh, it will be cheaper and since I'm not painting on it I'm just using it as backing paper so uh, the brand does not matter mm -hmm. you know it's, it's not like I I must get the really good one um, I, I have used store brand I have used um, you know more affordable brand like Carson and, um, you know, Stratmore is actually a good brand too, but I mean, I have, been, I have used Stratmore, I have used Carson, but the one that come in a book um, and, you know, maybe like $24, $30 for the whole book. So FHO is only $1.50 a piece instead of $3.50 a piece, um, which, you know, if it is a nice piece of artwork, um, I think it's worth it. And then of course, you know, like, just like when you are scratching the watercolor paper on, um, on a board. So I use a, um, um, the um you know the, the board for painting uh when when you scratch your watercolor paper and i use staples um so just like scratching a watercolor paper i that's what i've been using so so i i don't use the wheat start i use you know a glue that is store bought and by the way for this um this is not the only brand um i have students who told me that they've been using a glue called yes i have not tried it so i i cannot tell you you know whether it's good or, or bad but then um, you know, like um, she square by it. Um, she said it's good. And then uh, the consistency, because I have looked at it, the consistency is similar to Emmons glue. And believe it or not, I actually heard that there's one guy who is a teacher. Um, he was showing his student to use Emmons glue, right? So, I mean, I would not do that, you know, but, but then, you know, like uh, it, it seems like, you know, uh, different people have different experience and they are doing different things. Um, one thing that you want to be careful is, um, um, you know, like if you use natural material, um, of course it's all natural, but then, um, you know, sometimes some people are complaining about the yellowing of the painting uh, or years. And sometimes they are also um, concerned about the um, kind of like, um, you know, it's not really molding, but sometimes you will have some little yellow spot or green spot. And I was told that there is, um, a kind of like um, a powder that you can add to it. I'm not sure. I think the English name could be alum Ming Fan. You know, like um, oh. supposedly you add a, a, a small teaspoon of that into your, um, 
into your your like your 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 pace, then it will kind of like have a purification and and also you know like make sure that it would not would not become acidic. But then you know I'm not a hundred percent sure about this. it. It is alum. It is, it is alum. So yeah. so we actually put a dusting of alum onto the um, wheat flour, and supposedly it it can change the chemistry and and you would not have box problem on that. But as I say, because I, I seldom really do that. Um, so I, I don't want to, you know, say from experience. When I first started off, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, I have been using, you know, cooking my own glue and things like that. Um, by the way, you know, after you cook the glue, um, um, you can use it, of course, the day off, and you can put it in the refrigerator and it can last for a few days, but then um, it doesn't last forever. I mean, it's, it's not like you, you make a big jar and then a month later you try to use it. I mean, it doesn't work that way, right? Um, so, so you have to be, you know, kind of like, um, you know, like uh, be mindful of uh, how much you are using. And um, of course, more is better than less. Um, and, and that's why I always put together a um, kind of like a stack of uh, painting that I want to mark. Oh, by the way, I also have this. This is also from Linko. It's called Pure Rice Starch. And it's the same thing as this. Um, so basically, it's, um, you know, it's just pure rice starch, but this is wheat starch. Um, and it's the same function. You dilute with water and, um, and then uh, after that, similar to this, you cannot just dilute it. You have to cook it. You have to use some warm heat to, to stir it, just like making a gravy. You know, when it all becomes transparent with no lumps, then you can use it as a, ba as a paste. Um, and then, you know, like, um, with some of you started Sumie uh, 20 plus years ago, you'll probably remember um, at one point, teachers are actually using wallpaper glue to mount. I'm not sure whether you've heard that, but yeah. then, um, you know, probably in the 80s and in, I mean, because at that time, you know, I mean, they may exist, but then we are just not aware of them. And then the glue that is called yes does not exist and, and things like that. So. Um, um, teachers have been actually showing students how to use wallpaper glue, which, you know, at that time in the 70s and the 80s, um, people do decorate their house with wallpaper. So if you go to the Home Depot, you can buy wallpaper and you can buy wallpaper glue, which is kind of like a paste, or they are powder that you um, add water, cook and make into a paste. So those are wallpaper glue and uh, teachers have been using that, but then, uh, first of all, wallpaper is not popular anymore, so it may not be that easy to buy wallpaper glue. And um, they are also complaining about, you know, like uh, there's a possibility of yellowing. And, um, and, and also, you know, like uh, you don't buy wallpaper glue in a small jar because wallpaper glue is usually for wallpaper projects to paint the whole wall. So, yeah. so they usually come in really big buckets, right? Um, so, so those are kind of, you know, it, that's what people have been using at one point and then stop using. So, Joan, I have used that and I've gotten, it's a powder that I've gotten from OAS mm -hmm. and I don't cook it. it. I just mix it with water. Yeah, because, because I mean, like, as I say, you know, it's the wallpaper, um, you know, they have make it as easy as possible. Right. So, so um, you know, it's, it's whatever instruction on the package is that, but then as I say, you know, like, People used to use wallpaper glue and then they um, changed to, you know, like wheat paste from, uh, as I say, almond glue, yes, and, and these. And, um, you know, um, we, I also have seen um, an artist who is, um, he is of Chinese descent, but he is actually work in Japan. And um, he dry mang instead of wet mang his artwork. He's actually more a calligrapher than, a, than an artist. Uh, on a painting and um, his Japanese and Chinese calligraphy, he dry mount and it's similar to the dry mount machine. If you have seen the dry mount machine from a frame shop and basically they, they have the paper and then um, they have the kind of like the backing board and then there is a spray of glue um, then that they spray on the mounting board and then they press the paper onto the board and then the board is actually a heat to the mounting board with heat. So in a way it's a, it's a big iron, you know, like the, 
the machine actually put the paper here. I mean, put the painting here, put the board here, and then um, like like press onto it. And then there's some heat, and then it it will be smooth and nice. And that's dry mounting. And I know that you will be go to some frame shop, especially when people are trying to frame poster. Um, you know, now, I mean, nowadays, I mean, as I say, you know, like technology has changed a lot of things. People don't buy poster anymore. They they just want to look at it in their cell phone. <laughs> so it's different now. Um, but then, you know, like in the olden times when you have a movie poster or when you have, you know, a, a rock band or a concert poster and you want to frame it, uh, your framer would usually ask you to dry mount it and then frame it so you can, uh, because usually posters are on very thin material and you don't want it to wrinkle. So that's what dry mounting, you are not wet mounting, you are actually spraying some, um, uh, spray a, uh, a thin layer of glue onto the board and then put the uh, painting on top and basically a big iron, iron it down, All right? So that's dry mounting. Um, I think I've answered the questions on the mm -hmm. mounting. Mm -hmm. um, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jill. Thank you. Oh, um, I promise that um, last time I talked about the mineral colors and then um, I was unable to find the sources uh, because I got the questions maybe like one or two days before, but then I found it. Um, this is from Daniel Smith. Um, so, so this particular one talk about um, one, a particular series of the watercolor. And in this particular brochure, they even have, you know, like this is the mineral and this is the color that it produced. And then they explain, you know, what it is and also tell you that where's the mine. And um, some of them are in, a lot of them are in Brazil, uh, Chile, Africa, and some of them are in America or in uh, uh, calendar. Uh, for example, we have some in uh, Alaska, USA, Arizona, USA, and then we have it, um, this one in uh, Texas. So, so these are the minerals that, um, that are mined actually locally or overseas. And after they mine it, they actually grind it. And then, you know, this is the brochure that talk about the grinding process. And of course, you know, like, um, you know, it, it's, it's hard to read them, but basically um, they will tell you how they, you know, cut the rocks into pieces and then grind them into different, you know, with different machines. And they are, you know, of course, you know, like very technical process of how to grind it. So the, the material, uh, the molecules would be flattened into a certain size. And then, and then with all this different refinement, then they will produce, they will produce the paint in the, at the end, all right? But um, I'm not sure, uh, uh, I'm sure that, you know, actually after, you know, the, the, the restriction has been eased, uh, maybe you will see it in your local art store again, uh, because um, Daniel Smith as a uh, producer of fine watercolor, they have ambassadors that is across the country that have this for sure. And also have um, um, actually, you know, like if they have a workshop or have kind of like a little conference, um, the specialist will actually bring the actual rocks to show you. So, so he would have a big, big uh, briefcase, and when he opened it, there will be all these little pieces of rocks, and then next to it would be actually the colors. And um, depending on what art store you have next to you, um, when you are ready to venture out and browse around an art store, sometimes they would have color sheets like this, and um, these are the ones that are for sale because this is actually not printed. This is actually a dot of color. So, so it's actually a dot of color. And, and they sell it because what they did is, um, what you can do is if you have some water and then you put some water onto the dot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm sure you can see. I'm to put it onto the dot. You can actually get pink out of it. All right. So, so, um, so you can know exactly how this color looks like. And as a matter of fact, I mean, um, this is one dot, but as I say, you know, for really good watercolor, um, 
you can rewet it and you can still paint with it. So, so this sheet of paper would have sample of all these colors, right? And, and I don't think this is a giveaway. I think, you know, if you go to the art store, I think this sample, um, you can buy it for like, you know, depending on where you, you do. I mean, in Plaza, I think it's like $4.95, $4.99, I mean, I mean, a few dollars, okay? And then if you go to their, you know, kind of like a paint workshop, a lot of time what the paint workshop, what is attractive about that is um, the specialist would, would bring with him or her, you know, all the different colors that they try to showcase. And then they will have little giveaways such as this, because I didn't pay for this. This is actually, I attended a, one of those uh, classes and then they explain their paints and then they are trying to, you know, like for example, showcase these three colors. And these are the three dots that is representative of these three colors. And of, similar to the other one is a dot. So, you know, when I, when I feel like it, I can actually, you know, like um, dilute this and then I can paint with this to, to see what this is the color that I'm looking for, all right? And if you go to those workshops, um, I'm sure that, you know, like um, your local store may have them, you know, when, when people are, you know, like um, um, kind of safe together and um, want to do that, do so as well. Um, this is actually a play that I got from, um, from one of these workshops. I mean, the play is mine, okay, because I, I use little plays like this. And then when when they are, you know, trying to showcase the color, they will actually pass the tube around with all the students and everybody just put a little blob onto the plate and then you can you can play with that, all right? And um, some of the colors are very interesting. For example, this one, um, you can see it's a little shiny because it's of a particular mineral that, has a shine to it. So, so the sparkle, um, almost, almost kind of like naturally metallic paint, right? Because the, the rock is actually a sparkly rock. So, so since this is particle from the rock, um, so, so this particular paint is sparkly, right? I, I have to look at my notes to find exactly what color it is, but, but then, you know, it's some of the, 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 kind of the fun thing to go to a workshop like this is, uh, you can see all these different colors. But, um, you know, like that, that answer the questions why the mineral paint are so expensive, because they are the actual rocks. They are semi-precious stone. And, and why it is kind of so expensive to use because um, the process of grinding them are very difficult. Uh, the amount of rock in that color are also in limited supplies. And then another thing is, you know, the craftsmanship of making them of course, you know, this one is the Western watercolor, but then for the Chinese, Korean, Japanese um, mineral colors, um, the theory is the same. They still do the, do the hard labor of mining the rock, grinding the rock, and also, you know, picking the right amount of glue to put them together. So um, that's why it's expensive, but that's why it also does not fade in color because it's the actual stone that you are, or mineral that you are putting on your artwork. All right, so let's see. Um, I am really close to my 30 minutes. Do I have any more questions? Okay, with not, um, I put this up because I'm not sure whether you guys um, noticed. Um, this is a painting that I've done um, a long time ago, but I did it so big that I didn't have a chance to mount it yet because I obviously do not have a piece of paper, backing paper that big. Uh, if I'm going to mount it, it will be professionally done. Um, but then um, I have, I think I have 20 birds all over. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, thank you everyone for um, giving me feedback on the um, online workshop. I have finished the article and it will be in the upcoming issue of the SUNY quarterly. And also thank you everybody who have submitted their artwork, um, I believe. Um, because I'm not the editor, so it's up to the editor to pick um, which painting uh, to put into the uh, article. But then um, I believe that, you know, like they have commented how beautiful those uh, submissions are. So um, think across that, you know, like your artwork will make it to, um, you know, the Sumi magazine as well. And then um, another thing is I have asked about the bird workshop and um, I'm sorry that I cannot tease everyone because um, I have one or two persons that actually want me to avoid Saturday and Sunday. 
uh, but then I have more um, requests to actually move it from a Friday to a uh, Saturday because it's just easier for, for them to, to sign up. And then um, also, you know, um, no one won a full day. So I'm breaking into two consecutive uh, workshops on two super different Saturdays. So that would be on the bird and um, uh, a small one, not the big one, a small one. And we will talk about, um, you know, like different postures. And um, I will probably start with just a small bird. And we will talk more about, about that during the workshop. But if you have any questions about the workshop, oh, by the way, it will be in July, um, 17 and the 24th, right? So um, any questions? Because I want to make sure that I am- um, Joan, uh, I had one question. Yes. Uh, um, when you do the adhesive one, do you add alum to that? No. You don't add alum to that? to the adhesive because no, it's pH because, balance. Because already. this is already pH balance. Okay. Yeah. And, I just want and, to make um, sure. You know, like, um, not in this box, but then in this box, it's actually say museum gray. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the, there's some word base that say museum gray. What, so what is so the name I, of that? I have I say that I have, I, I'm having confidence in, in yeah. that. Um, and um, so I do not add alum to it. But then if I were to use the uh, wheat starch, that, that my friend mailed me, I'll probably do that. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, but then you only need um, you know, a very small amount because supposedly the alum, because alum is a preservative. So, mm -hmm. so I believe that you know, by adding the alum, it will, it will kind of like um, you know, change the acidity and the box doesn't like it anymore. Or maybe it's not the pH balancing. Yeah. What is the name of the yellow one? Uh, it's glaring, so you can't read it when you're looking it's, at it. it. Both of them are produced by Linco. This, like, this is uh, a company in Massachusetts. But they're the same. By the way, I, I don't get any endorsement from anyone. So so I'm just telling you the brand that I use. Okay. And, um, um, they are also like, um, if you go, I mean, I know that, you know, we can buy um, a lot of things online, but then, um, you know, I, <laughs> I, I'm i old fashioned. I like to go into an art <laughs> store and look around. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, like in an art store, they put all the adhesive together and all the watercolor together and all the uh, acrylic together and things like that. So you go to the area where they do book binding mm -hmm. and adhesive are all together. Then you just look around and then pick every bottle and try to read them. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. uh, and then you may have some discovery <laughs> and then also talk to the store managers. I mean, um, a lot of times that's what I like to do. But then, of course, I mean, I have, have not been doing that for a while. Okay. Thank you, Joan. Yeah, John, I have a quick question yes. uh, about your using watercolor um, paper for backing when yes. you're mounting. Have you pre-stretched that paper then before and you? No, but I wet it. I I I do not have to pre-stress it because I have to say that I'm a very lazy person. Not not because it may not be good, right? It could be good. Um, uh, you know, like I mean, is let, let me think about the logistic because. It's hard to do a demo on a Zoom chat, right? It's easier to do a recording. Um, and I've done that in the uh, Crinkle Paper Workshop. Um, but basically what I do is, um, for example, with this is the artwork, I, I um, put it on the table, uh, right side down, spray, uh, uh, spray bottle, make it all wet. And then I apply glue, okay, leave it there. And then I have, for example, this is my uh, backing paper, which is my 140 pound watercolor paper. Yeah. Before I put it in, because it will strain, right? Because it's wet. So yeah. what I do is actually wet this piece of paper first. So, so this, this, before I put it onto my rice paper, this whole thing is wet, okay. right? This whole thing is wet. So, so what I do is, this 140 pound is, I mean, it doesn't break. So what I do is, um, depending on the size, if it is small enough, I can just put it onto a, a tray of paper and just, I mean, a tray of water and just go through it. So yeah. the whole thing is wet. But usually um, my size is um, 14 by 17 onto a piece of backing paper that is 1824. So it's pretty big and yeah. I don't have a tray that big. So what I do is I actually would uh, make sure that my, my uh, sink is clean, right? And I, and I turn on the closet, the faucet, cold water, not hot water, cold water. And then I'll just run the water onto the paper, 
yeah. on one side to make sure that the whole paper is wet because you can look at it, you know, to make sure that it's shiny when it's wet, right? So there's no dry spot. And then I turn it over and then I, I mean, the, the faucet is still running. So, so I make sure that all the water is running through it and then make sure there's no dry spot and then turn off the faucet, drip it down a little bit so it's not like dripping and make the whole floor wet uh, down the sink. And then with this wet piece of paper, still quite wet, you know, it's a lot of moisture, I bring it over on top of my um, rice paper artwork, kind of slightly dropped it on top. And then remember I use my water on water, mm -hmm. like grease out, I mean like smooth yeah. it, you know, like, uh, like the Union Jack, you mm -hmm. know, like straight down, sideway, yeah. diagonal, you know, like um, all orient directions. And then I get my um, paper and then I roll, 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 roll over um, sideways and roll over top down. And then take a deep breath and then peel the whole thing out yeah. and then put it onto my um, uh, board, right? So um, let, me, let me look into the video that I have because as I say, I have, um, demonstrate that multiple times in my uh, crinkle paper um, workshop because some of them, I have to show you how to straighten it. And some of the crinkle paper technique, uh, crinkle paper technique, I actually make the crinkle, paint a little bit, and then I straighten it and then finish the painting as with, you know, on, on a flat surface. So, so you know, the, the, the mounting process is part of it. So let me let me review my video and see if I can cut out a portion to share with you guys because it's it's hard to actually do a demo um, on I mean like I don't mind doing it on, on Zoom chat but it's hard to do it because um, where this setup is it's not it's not next to the sink um, so it's it's kind of it's kind of tricky but let me just think about the logistic I'll I'll see what I can do on an upcoming one to to let oh, everybody see it because sometimes it. talking is one thing seeing is different because I remember. Uh, most Sumi um, uh, book on the last chapter would include how to mount, right? So I'm sure that uh, if you have multiple Sumi painting books, you have read about the mounting process in multiple articles. But then um, reading is one thing. I still remember the first time I actually, um, I, I finished a workshop and uh, it's a workshop that I do every year in Pennsylvania. And then one time the student asked, you know, like, can you show me how to do mounting? And I said, okay, I let me just, you know, like make sure that I have all the material and then we can do it after class because not everybody want to, are interested. So I did it as a bonus to the class and all the students who stay and and watch um, really said that, oh, that's how it's done because they can read all about it. But when they actually see it, then they're like, oh, I thought it's done this way. But when you lift it and when I saw how you lift it up, I, I mean, I can see the little tricks on things like that. So, so I want to be able to show you, but I, I don't know what the logistic of doing that because um, where, where this is, it's not next to the sink. So, so it's kind of hard, <laughs> but, but, well, but let me think about it. I, I, I promise to, to, to work out the logistic on that. All right, so um, any other questions? With not, I have actually depleted my um, 30 minutes and um, uh, I will have, let me see. Oh, um, I have a grape, a workshop of painting grapes mm -hmm. uh, in two weeks on the 25th on a Friday, all right? So um, yeah. there will be painting grapes and uh, not only grapes, but also the vines and the leaves and the grapes. And um, it's kind of fun, okay? Because it's like little circles, right? And then um, for people who actually don't like Zoom workshop, but like the, um, uh, the, the video workshop, um, because it's hard to do one together, um, that, that is also Zoom and the uh, video. So I'm building one on painting wisteria. So it will also cont contain the climbing vines and you know the compositions and things like that. Um, I am kind of slow in making it because I'm not sure whether you guys hear it, but then um, I'm in a suburb that have lots of trees and I'm very conscientious that the cicada are in the background. So, so I, I believe that my audio may not Ellie. be that good. So I'm, I'm reluctant to, to record, you know, last month and also this week because um, um, the cicada is signing 
with a with a low humming on the background. I'm, as I say, I'm not sure whether people can hear it, but but I can hear it myself. So, so I have a gut feeling that the audio will will hear it. Really? Oh, okay, good. Because I'm I'm not sure if you can hear. I mean, I can hear it now. Uh, my the cicada in my front yard are are, are singing right now. <laughs> Okay. All right. So uh, if you have any particular questions, I'm going to stop the recording. I will uh, upload it into um, YouTube so you can watch it again. And um, uh, any questions, any other things, comments? If not, I'll probably thank everybody for joining. And um, I'll see you in the grape workshop, uh, in the wisteria that I'm building, or in the bird workshop that is coming up. Oh, by the way, I, I will also send you, um, uh, email you with the questions. Um, I'm thinking about a one year celebration for the online workshop. Um, you may not notice, but then it's almost a year. I started it at the end of August, um, beginning of September last year. So this is already June. So in a few months, um, I would have, you know, like this online presence for a year. And, um, uh, you know, like the Nuna New Year celebrations, um, I believe it's a fun thing to have everybody just share the artwork that 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 had inspired by the workshop and you know just just do kind of sharing and things like that. So um, if this is something that you want to do, um, let me know. Let me just um, send it in email so you can answer me in email because I'm also thinking about um, do you like it to be uh, just a show and tell? like last time at the new New Year, or do you want it to be like an art show? Because I can, you know, like um, with your permission, um, post the artist's artwork onto my website, maybe like for a month or for, you know, for whatever agreed amount of time. Um, so, so you can ask, you can tell your family and you can go visit and to see your work and other people's work. I mean, if this is something you want to do, or do you want it even one step further to make it like a quote unquote competitions? And, and then we will pick like, um, like the first prize, second prize, third prize. And, um, and I'm thinking instead of, um, instead of you know, finding a judge you know, or things like that, maybe it's like the peanut award. <laughs> do you know what is the peanut award? The no. peanut award is, um, you know, like a lot, sometimes when you have, go to an art show, the judge pick all the winners, but then the audience pick their favorite. And the way they pick their favorite is um, they would put a peanut into a little box. And then at the end of the show, the painting that has the mo most number of peanuts is their favorite. So you got the peanut <laughs> award. <laughs> Meaning basically is popularity, you know, um, so, so in a way, instead of me picking which is the winner, we, we vote for each other's painting um, or something like that. But then, of course, it also could be, um, uh, I mean, you may not want to be competitive. You want to just, you know, just you may feel the pressure and things like that. So, so let, me, um, let me send all those um, logistics and questions to you. And um, so maybe you can, you can, you know, like, let me know your opinion and things like that so we can... Um, collaborate into something for the one year celebration. Because I think uh, one year mark should be should be fun. It's like the little baby's one year birthday. You know, we, we should celebrate <laughs> it somewhere, somehow, yeah. right? So right. Um, so I think, you know, like we, we should do that. So so how and and um, um, what to do and, and things like that, we're working on. All right, so I thank everybody for joining and um, you know, like, uh, thank you, and uh, I'll see you, and I will send you the um, the, the questions, but thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.